All right, welcome back. We continue talking about the Penguins and the Flyers. Game one Wednesday night here at PPG Paints Arena. Uh, Jason, the injury situation. Derek Broussard, it looks like, you know, he's been preserved. He should be ready to go. But what happens if he's re-injured in the playoffs? And also talk to me about the depth of their blue line. Are they capable of going on and still being good if one or two guys go down? Well, I'll take the second part of that first, Pomp. And if two guys go down on the blue line, they're in a world of hurt. Um, a lot of people ask me who their number eight defenseman is. I would probably say it's Andre Padan, but I, it honestly doesn't matter. They're in so much trouble. Um, if one guy gets hurt, maybe you get something out of Matt Hunwick or Chad Ruedel, depending on who the six is. And as far as Derek Broussard, I do believe he's going to play in game one. Um, if they lose him, it really hurts the depth of their bottom six. Um, you look at a guy like Riley Shea, and if he's centering your fourth line, maybe you put a Zach Aston Reese with him and they click, even maybe a Connor Sherry. You take him out, Shea is your third line center, and then your fourth line, ugh, not so much. So they need Broussard. They'll get Broussard. He just has to stay healthy. I think Riley Shea was pretty good uh, throughout the year. Now, the counter argument is well, if Riley Shea was so good, why did you go get Derek Broussard? Well, anytime you could get Derek Broussard, you do, um, especially in what you gave up. That being said, I have full confidence in Riley Shane. That Riley Shane, his his numbers diminished, his his ice time diminished quite obviously when um, when Derek Broussard came marching in a, into town. But if he has to play and play a big role, I, I think Riley Shane can play in big games, and I think he'll be just fine. Yeah, and, and I don't know if the the worry is so much with Riley Shane bumping up to the third line if you're without Derek Broussard for a time in the first two rounds of the playoffs. It's you know, who's centering your fourth line and what does your fourth line look then and how many minutes can you give that fourth line so that you don't have to ride the top three lines into the ground? I, I don't know if I have that level of confidence in a line of what, Carter Rowney, Tom Kunakel, uh, and whoever. Zach Aston Reese, probably. Okay, Zach Aston Reese, I'll take, and we'll see how he rotates in and out of the lineup. I still think I'd like to see him get a chance up in one of those top two lines uh, if this series goes well. Point is, uh, it, it's not so much a worry about Shea-in. It's a worry about what you have on the fourth line if Broussard is out and you've got to bump Shea up. Colin, give me an X factor, somebody we're not talking about. We all know the big guns on both sides, but right. give me a name of someone who may be a difference maker. Hey, Bob, you series. know who's been really good the past two playoffs that I think is going to be good again that nobody talks about? Brian Dumoulin. He's been super. He's been lights out, and he doesn't miss games in the playoffs, and he shows up in big situations. I know it sounds crazy. Dumo's my guy in big-time situations for these Penguins. I got another one for you. Connor Sherry. Had two goals the last time the Penguins played in Philly. His game has looked much, much yep. better of late. Looks like he's playing with a little bit of confidence. I don't know if it's fair to call this guy an X factor or not, but after the way he played stretches of this regular season, somewhat shaky, coming back from a huge injury, it's Chris Letang. If Chris Letang turns it on in these playoffs, it completely changes the complexion of every single series they play because it, it, it not only extends the depth of your blue line and what you can do offensively from the back end, but also extends what you can do on your power play as well. All right, one other question here before we go, and this is one that we saw happen last night. It was kind of surprising because did Torts throw in the tile? Did he say, I don't want to play the Penguins? What about the Devils? These, these guys had something to play for, you would think, uh, in terms of being third, and maybe they wanted to avoid Pittsburgh. But Chris Mack, did they avoid Pittsburgh purposely? Did you see the look on Torts' face when they lost in overtime the other night when he stomped off the bench like a petulant little child? Yes. Torts doesn't want to face the Penguins. He sat guys down. He's already dealing with some injuries. Felino out until who knows when. So, yeah, he, he give him the, the little cherry on top of he wanted his team to remain healthy or as healthy as it is at this point in the season. But, yeah, of course he yeah, doesn't want to play like, the Penguins. So what if he did? It's gamesmanship. Look here. Pittsburgh wouldn't have a hockey team if Pittsburgh didn't uh, it, involve itself in some gamesmanship because Mario Lemieux would have never been a Pittsburgh Penguin. Who cares? There's no rule against it. You do what you want. You line up who you play. You line up um, a, a, a draft pick potentially in different situations like that. I don't care what you do and how you play it. It's just gamesmanship. He doesn't know anybody an explanation. I love the freaking out over like what Torts said too. Like, is, is he really going to publicly admit that? Right. Just, yep. Through the game. Didn't care. Don't want to <laughs> play the Penguins. He's never going to say it. You think he meant it? You think he did it? Yes, I think he so absolutely Torch did tanked. it on purpose. He tanked. Okay, interesting stuff. They get the Capitals in the first round. Be careful what you wish for. And by the way, those people in Philadelphia saying it's the year of Philadelphia. Eagles win. Villanova wins. The Sixers may win the Eastern Conference in the NBA. Who knows? It's going to be interesting. It starts on Wednesday night. And now it's time for 
This week's Smooth Moves brought to you by Armina Stone, where you get some of the best and smoothest granite, marble, and quartz countertops from them to your kitchen. So Smooth Moves, let's start top to bottom. Jason, you go first. All right, I'm going to stick with hockey like always. Casey DeSmith keeping his mask on in a post-game interview with Dan Potash. This is after Tristan Jari, the Penguins' other backup, a couple weeks ago tripped and fell on his butt. Some smooth moves all around by the Penguins' backup goalie. Smooth moves by a couple of former Pirates, Andrew McCutcheon and Pedro Alvarez. Extra inning home runs for their new uh, respective clubs for uh, the Giants and the Orioles for McCutcheon and for Pedro Alvarez. Huge extra inning home runs. Won a grand slam for yeah. Alvarez. Smooth moves there. Smooth move. Jamison Tyone today at PNC yeah. Park. One hitter, complete game shutout, which means about the last one hit complete game shutout thrown by a Pirate starter at PNC Park as Todd Ritchie 17 years ago. Thank you, JMO. <laughs> and those are the smooth moves of the week brought to you by Armina Stone. This is the place we're going to get the world's best granite, smoothest countertops right from them to your kitchen. Check them out at Armina Stone. And when we come back, we'll continue the conversation. We'll talk about the Pirates off to a 7 and 2 start. Do you believe it? Next.